Hi there, everyone. It's Mrs. Ernest, live from her classroom, talking about population geography and some of the basics to understand about population trends. So this is a really cool infograph, and I actually gave you a cute little video to watch about the people of the world as if they were 100 people. So there's some really neat things to look at on here. You could see age and religion and literacy, which is, are they able to read and write? What language people speak? Nutrition. The world is an incredibly huge place with so much diversity and, and variety. And we call this diversity and variety and the counting of those people demographics. So demographics is a study of human population distribution and migration of people from place to place. And demographic people or demographers, if you'd prefer, uh, study things like the food supply and health and life expectancy, the status of women and migration. We're going to really look at migration next week. Uh, but this week, we're going to just look at the basics of demographics. So things to look at with demographics. Demographics are all about maps. People are not distributed evenly across the earth, and you can see this on this map. Population is clustered in the mid-latitude climates and, uh, and is ve relatively sparse, sparse, the people, I mean, in dry and polar climates and in the highlands. So when we talk about demographics, we talk about density, how many people per square mile, or per square kilometer. We talk about distribution, how it's distributed across the planet, and then carrying capacity, how many people can survive uh, in an area given the technology of production in this square meter. So there's some really cool maps out there. This is a world population density map that really shows you, you know, where people live. You can find Isle on there, and there's not a lot of people up there. Uh, this is also, we take all this stuff here on this map, or this table, and then we put it into a map. So here's your population, the millions, your density, all that sort of stuff that we just saw in that map. This is a cartogram. This distorts the map to show you where the population centers are. So India and China, you can see, are the big populations. Birth and death rates are another thing that demographers look at. The birth and the death rates refer to how many people are born or how many people die. Duh. And developing countries have higher death rates and birth and birth rates. Uh, birth rates are higher in developing countries for the following reasons. One, there's no birth control. It's expensive. Or well, sometimes there's religious restrictions against birth control. Economic factors. People will have more babies because they need more people to work the farm. And the role of women in society. Women don't have any power, therefore they can't say no. We don't want to have any more children. And it's, it's kind of goes from there. Use your imagination. Uh, death rates are higher in developing countries for the, these two reasons. One, there's no good access to medical care and poor nutrition. That raises the death rates. So here's the net birth rate 2007, so it's a little old, but it shows you where the most people are born. The green is your high, the, um, the red is actually your low. Here it is kind of in a nice little chart. You can see uh, this is a stage of demographic transition we're going to talk about in a second, but you can tell where the population growth is. When your death rate and your birth rate is high, your population is stable, and when your uh, birth rate is high, but your death rate is low, you have population growth. So here it is in a more, you know, technical chart. You can see a stationary uh, right here where you've got the death rate and the, run, and the, and the birth rate being pretty high, but stable. So you got a stable population. You've got an expanding birth rate, which is expanding population. Uh, some examples that Kenya, Italy, their death rate is, falls rapidly and their birth rate is still high. Uh, they also have here um, late expanding, low stationary. That's what we are in the United States where we actually are really stationary. Our population is not growing. We're pretty stable. And then we get this declining birth rate and, de and declining death rate. It's kind of a natural decrease. And that's Germany is a great example of that. And they actually encourage people to come from other countries to live in Germany because their population is shrinking. So here it is right here in the quick and dirty here. Uh, your your birth rate and your death rate, your country birth rate, country death rate, uh, that's, that's the stationary. Then you've got the high growth, which is where the death rate plummets while the birth rate stays the same. Then you've got the birth rate starting to climb while the death rate continues to stay low for a slower growth. Stage four, your low growth, the country reaches this point when your birth rate and your death rate are almost equal. That would be us. And then, whoops, sorry, that would be Germany. We were this one. 
So then we also have this thing called the population clock, which I should have given you, given you a link somewhere else, but I'm going to try to do it really fast. It's pretty cool. Here's your population uh, thing. This tells you the world population and the U.S. population. So uh, U.S. population still growing. World population growing really super fast. So we've got 329 million in the United States and 7 billion in the world population. Now the question is, how do I get it back to our thing? Collect the extra screen. This is what I want. The power of the technology while trying to teach remotely. All right, so population growth from the dawn of history to about 1820, uh, you could see that the population doesn't really grow very fast uh, in the world. Then about 1820 to 1930, you start to see us go up to about 2 billion. And then by the 1970s, we jump really fast here at about 4 billion. And then a decade, a billion for all practical purposes at this point, they estimate about 7 billion in 2015. And then from there on, you just see it grow. Here it is again in a, in a quick, or in a, in a close-up here. Uh, 80 million people are added to the population, world population, about every year. And demographers actually believe that's going to stabilize worldwide by the 21st century, which is what we're in now. So uh, maybe by the end of the 21st century. Here's another one that kind of gives you this hint that we're going to see kind of a flattening out. And you can see here the, the charts, which are really cool to tell you where those people are living. Asia is still the place where the population of the world is living. Uh, other things we talk about when we talk about the geography of demography, we look at case studies. And India is a great case study. It, India has increased, has its in, this in explosive growth, um, particularly in the northern part of the country around the border of Bangladesh and stuff. India has overtaken China as the most populated nation or will overtake China as the world's most populated uh, nation. They have 1.9% growth with 18 uh, million people added each year. So in 1950s, they started to plan a little bit. They were a little concerned about how many people they had in their country because when you have a lot of people, you have to provide for all those people. In the 1960s, you start to see some serious efforts of controlling the population. Uh, the state of Maharashtra, how's that? Uh, plan to sterilize every one with children over three children. But there was a riot, and they dropped that plan. Uh, today, they in do advertising and propaganda, encourage families to have fewer children. Um, it's the kind of the low-key approach. Some Indian states have over 100 million, uh, more than, than many other countries in the world. So the religious diversity, Hindus uh, and Buddhism, uh, really make a difference in India, and it, it, it's really... Uh, they have to change their policy depending on what religion they're looking at. Here is a sign for free family planning sterilization op, uh, operations in 1996. So you could be sterilized, and that is an option for birth control. So India being an interesting population topic, you could see it here on the map. It doesn't actually look that bad for birth rate because they're making a concerted effort not to have a big birth rate in that country. Here is your death rate, uh, and this is, you can see, most people are dying where there is not a huge amount of medical infrastructure. So again, that death rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 each year. Your birth rate is the number of births per 1,000 each year. Fertility rate is the number of children for each woman who is childbearing age. And uh, dependency ratio is the number of people who are too young or too old to work. So here are your crude death rates again. I have a lot of really cool maps in this PowerPoint. Fertility rates, here's your fertility rates. You can see that you have a higher fertility rate in uh, the African continent. Infant mortality rates is another interesting topic to look at. It's the amount of children that die in a given year, and that would usually be before the age of two, I think. Uh, so you have to look at the relation between money in a country and its infant mortality rate. That usually has to do with things like hospitals and women's rights. So here's your death rate, infant death rate. For every 1,000 live births, how many infants die? Uh, so 1932 is your yellow, and green is the modern era in 1998. So you can really see a drop with medicine, modern medicine. Literacy rates is the amount of people who can read and write in a country, and that may vary by gender. So here you are for your literacy rates. You can really see that your Western Europe, your Russia, United States, Australia, and uh, this, I believe, is 
uh -oh, Argentina down here too. So for high literacy rates. Here's women's literacy rates, which is a totally different bird. Uh, the same kind of countries with high literacy rates tend to also educate their women. And that is the end of the PowerPoint. You have some really interesting assignments to go with this unit, and it has to do with looking at some of this demography on websites like the population uh, websites and Gapminder. We're going to give you a couple really cool ones to look at. So please look at the assignments and get to it, and they are due by the end of the week. I uh, hope you are all surviving well.